This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin versus Monero. This is a question that I've been getting a lot lately, and I realize that I've never really talked that much about Monero. Now, compared to Bitcoin, Monero is still a very small project. The market cap, the fully diluted market cap, is just under $5 billion. By contrast, Bitcoin has a market cap, obviously, still over a trillion dollars. That being said, I would say that Monero is a very interesting project. I think you have these, what I call, I, what I've begun to call Dunning-Kruger coins, where uh, the, the followers and the holders tend not to be that smart, or they tend to, unfortunately, overestimate their knowledge and intelligence. I would include XRP, Doge, Cardano, Bcash, BSV in this category. By contrast, I have to say that all the Monero people that I've spoken with through this channel are very likable and I have a lot of respect for them. They're serious. They tend to be serious, smart, and privacy-loving people. The other thing about Monero that's quite interesting is that it's not listed by major exchanges, at least in the U.S. Brian Armstrong pretends that he wants to list it, but of course he always goes along with regulators. Um, and obviously Coinbase, Gemini, as far as I can tell, you can't really buy Monero on any of these exchanges in the U.S. Major U.S. exchanges don't like Monero. That means that it probably is a dangerous protocol, dangerous to the current financial system, and the regulators are scared of it. This makes me obviously like it even more. On the other hand, you could argue that the flip side of this is that it means that XMR, which is the abbreviation for Monero, is not as good of a Trojan horse as Bitcoin. You could take this argument either way. That being said, I have to say that Monero is a serious cryptocurrency. It runs on proof of work, just like Bitcoin. It's not quite as secure. As far as I can tell, you can still mine Monero on a CPU, so you could just mine it on a regular laptop. Bitcoin, by contrast, you have to mine it using a very specialized machine called an ASIC. Bitcoin network obviously has a much, much, much higher hash rate, higher security, much more difficult to launch a successful 51% attack. Bitcoin really is the gold standard for scarcity and security. Monero also... Unlike Bitcoin, does not have a fixed supply. Bitcoin obviously has a fixed supply of 21 million. That being said, Monero, the Monero supply is not quite as bad as I thought it was when I when I looked into it. So by May of next year, May of 2022, the block reward or the block subsidy is going to be fixed at 0.6 XMR. This means that there will, there will only be 432 roughly XMR created per day in the future for forever. And because this stays constant, what it means is that the inflation rate of Monero over time is basically zero after a certain point, simply because the supply gets so large and this new, uh, this new flow is so small compared to that. That's very close. Uh, it's not quite as good, I have to say, as Bitcoin having a, a fixed supply but it is, is definitely not something uh, not something to worry about. I do disagree with the Monero folks that you need a block subsidy to maintain security. I think the fee market will be sufficient for Bitcoin to maintain, maintain security even after the last Bitcoin or fractional Bitcoin is mined. That's really a subject for another video. So that being said, um, Monero does consensus right. It does a consensus mechanism right, uses proof of work. As we said, it's not a unicorn and rainbow consensus mechanism like proof of stake, which always devolves into something that looks like the current, uh, the current financial system where you have uh, very large stakeholders that just keep, keep getting richer and richer and control, control things. Scarcity, as we said, Monero is almost as good as Bitcoin. I would say, though, that Bitcoin has a much higher probability of not changing its monetary policy. The 21 million cap really is seared into everyone's, uh, all Bitcoiners' uh, heads, and, and that would be really the last thing they could change. Monero has, I think, a higher probability of eventually adjusting its monetary policy. Again, it's not quite as fixed in stone as Bitcoin. That being said, I think that it's still, um, in the inflation rate of, of Monero is not something that we have to worry about too much. So Monero checks a lot of the good boxes. Also, Monero does, did not... Uh, have a pre-mine, unlike Ethereum, unlike Cardano, unlike a lot of these these altcoins. As far as I can tell, it did not have a pre-mine. And so this is also a good thing. It checks the boxes, no pre-mine, proof of work, scarcity, etc. 
So in, in order to understand what Monero does better than Bitcoin, we have to just review quickly how Bitcoin is not an anonymous system. It's pseudonymous, which means you can transact on the blockchain, you can send Bitcoin, you can receive Bitcoin, but the sender address, the receiver address, the amount sent are all preserved in the blockchain forever. The blockchain is just an open ledger of all the transactions that have ever happened. And so there's, no, there's nothing in the Bitcoin protocol that asks for your username or uh, your, your uh, home address or your social security number, any, any way of really, or your real name, any way of linking anything to your real world account. But using Bitcoin in sort of a na naive way means that you're probably going to end up linking your real, real world identity identity to some of your transactions. So for example, if you buy Bitcoin on Coinbase, which is the main way I've been buying it over the years, or any other KYC exchange, which is really the easiest thing to do, at least in the US, and then you withdraw it to a receiver address, this gives chain address, uh, chain analysis firms a way to track you. So Coinbase knows who you are because you have to do KYC, you have to provide them with all your personal information. Then when you withdraw it to an external address, maybe your hardware wallet or your multi-sig address, they see where that's going and they know or they can surmise that it's tied to your real world identity. And so this is something that Monero seems to do better. They're stealth addresses. It's, uh, you can't see the sender or the receiver or the amount. They're ways of, of opening this information, uh, allowing people to see it for auditability. But at the general layer, you cannot see this. I'll, I'll link to this so you can go look in more detail. But I would, I would have to agree that Monero does appear to do privacy better than Bitcoin, at least in its current state. Now, it's still possible to use Bitcoin in a really private way, but you have to be much, much more careful. You have to buy your Bitcoin non-KYC, and you have to, when you move it around, you have to be very, very careful the way that you use it. If you spend it, for example, at a merchant, then they'll know who you are and they'll see the address, they'll see the Bitcoin coming from your address, etc. So you can still use Bitcoin in a very private way, but it's very easy to mess it up. And in these things, you have to be almost perfect or uh, eventually the chain analysis firms will see what you're doing. That being said, I still do not own Monero. And here are some of my concerns for you Monero folks in the audience. Let me know if these are overstated or understated or appropriate. I'm still worried a little bit about this inflation bug issue. How long would it take to detect an inflation bug in Monero? and how long would it take to fix it? It doesn't seem quite as auditable as Bitcoin in this respect. Uh, am, am I right or wrong to be concerned about this? You can let me know, you Monero uh, people. I would say that uh, Monero, even though it's currently a more private medium of exchange than Bitcoin, this doesn't mean that the token itself, Monero, the token versus Bitcoin, the token, it doesn't mean that Monero will accrue more value over the long term than Bitcoin. And I still, uh, I really want to like Monero and I like Monero people, but it's hard for me not to see Monero as just another utility token that you opt into the system. It allows you to transact really privately. And then when you're done with your transaction, when you're done with your super private transaction, why wouldn't you just exchange your Monero back into Bitcoin, especially if you're going to store it for a while? And paradoxically, the Monero community has made this really easy with their atomic swaps. I haven't used these, but I've heard that they, they work quite well. Basically, you can trade Monero for Bitcoin and vice versa in a very uh, non-KYC way online. So this, this, is a, this is actually, I think this is very cool. And it's, it's necessary for Monero to the extent that regulated exchanges don't like Monero. And so the Monero community created these atomic swaps to allow a way for Bitcoiners and other people who, who transact in Bitcoin to accumulate Monero rather than having to go through a regulated exchange. So you just buy Bitcoin, however you want to buy it, and then you swap it out for Monero. And this is one way to accumulate Monero. But, I th and again, I think this was necessary to get more people into Monero and to spread the distribution of it. But paradoxically, I think there's a, there's a downside to this. And that is that making these swaps so easy means that there's never any reason to store your wealth in Monero. You can just do your transaction, as we said, and then come back into Bitcoin whenever you need to. There's this analogy that Bitcoin's your savings account and Monero's your checking account. But in this case, uh, why have any money in your checking account? You can just move a little bit of money into your checking account when you need to spend it. So swap a little Bitcoin from Monero 
And then uh, when you're done, if you've made a profit on that or if you've received Monero, why would you ever hold it in Monero when these atomic swaps make it really easy to swap back into Bitcoin? And this is really what has happened over time. Bitcoin has been a much better store of value. It's outperformed Monero historic historically, and my hypothesis would be that it would continue to do so. So we can see really since the beginning of, of Monero, um, Bitcoin is up almost 8,000%. Monero's up closer to uh, uh, not even quite 3,000%. So we see this outperformance. And I, I would expect this to continue simply because these atomic swaps make it so easy to value your wealth and store your wealth in Bitcoin rather than Monero. So it doesn't matter how good Monero gets. There's no reason to use it other than as a, a temporary privacy solution. You can tell me if I've got something wrong there. Now, Bitcoin offers, still offers good privacy solutions. You can use the Lightning Network, uh, which is more private than transacting on the blockchain. And in many cases, we've talked about this, you can download the Moon Wallet, M-U-U-N, which is a non-KYC wallet. You can send and receive Bitcoin and no one needs to know who you are. Best, best privacy practices include always generating a fresh Bitcoin address when receiving Bitcoin. Don't, you, don't reuse addresses because that allows people to tie those addresses together to the same to the same receiver and presumably the same person behind it. Use coin joins, which I still need to talk about in a video. Uh, the Samurai wallet, I haven't, uh, I'm just about to start experimenting with this. This really does get high reviews as the best censorship and surveillance resistant wallet. It's still difficult to buy Bitcoin though in a non-KYC way. So if you're gonna use Samurai, it makes sense to, to first accumulate that Bitcoin using uh, a non-KYC uh, method. I do talk about this in my, in my course, The Ultimate Guide to Bitcoin, where I have four lectures so far on how to buy Bitcoin anonymously and without KYC. For obvious reasons, this is, not, this is something that I've kept behind the paywall. It's not something that can really go on YouTube for obvious reasons. CoinJoin as well is something that I want to cover where you can uh, mix your coins, slightly different from a coin mixer, uh, but CoinJoin is another way of increasing the privacy of Bitcoin. Of course, you have to make sure that's legal in your particular jurisdiction before you do it. So I hope this has been a helpful summary of my thoughts on Monero. Please correct me if I've made some mistakes. I'm, uh, I definitely know a lot more about Bitcoin than I do about Monero. And I should emphasize that I still have 100% of my quote unquote crypto portfolio in Bitcoin. I don't really believe in, in cryptocurrency as a thing. Bitcoin is a really unique once, uh, once in history asset. It's quite different. So I still, I still own zero altcoins. I don't own any, any Monero, uh, though I may, be, I may be playing around with a couple hundred dollars worth of it in, in the future. I have to say I haven't, I haven't used it before. So some of the things I say in this video might not be correct. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I'm still uh, still really a Bitcoin maximalist in this sense. Monero, I think rather than classify it as a cryptocurrency, you might want to classify it as just a really helpful privacy tool and sort of a temporary solution. And these, these privacy features will eventually make their way onto layer two, as we've already seen with the Lightning Network and layer three, and that the, the base layer, the Bitcoin blockchain itself will continue to remain pseudonymous. And then these privacy solutions will be incorporated at higher layers. So if you're interested in buying non-KYC Bitcoin, uh, check out this course. And if you're, if you're a Monero person and I've made some mistakes in this video, please correct me in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.